Hey, this is JT, and welcome to another episode of The Critical Thought. Today's episode will allow us to dig back into our archives. We're going to look at an issue that has touched so many of our lives because it makes up one of the components known as the fog, fear. You know, Lady C and I, we put together this video as a classic because we think that the value of it is so important. We still get so many calls. We talk to so many people who are dealing with this issue, and that is fear. Well, we had an analogy that we used that has really proved for a lot of people to be a thinking point of time to just stop and think, you know what? That's so true. And it's called the Wizard of Oz. We think that you will enjoy how we looked at this particular issue, and we invite you to share with us your thoughts as to how you can see, yes, this is exactly what I went through, a level of fear that very few people will understand. But we do because we all went through this fear. Well, enjoy and take care. You're listening to The Critical Thought, where we challenge our listeners to use critical thinking when examining the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm JT. And the purpose of this video is to talk to you about the things that the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Wizard of Oz have in common. Oh, my. Let's talk about it. Hey, man. What do the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Wizard of Oz have in common? Oh, man. I tell you, it's, it's, we were talking about this earlier. Um, it, <laughs> this is, this is, it's sad, man. It's really sad. It's really sad. Sad but true. It's sad but true. It's sad but true. Come on, Dorothy. Yeah, Dorothy. Toto. Yeah. What we got? Yeah, Tin Man. You know, these were sincere people, man. Mm. Sincere people. They, you know, they, they, they wanted to have their problems fixed. Mm. Okay. True. All four of them had problems that that was close and dear to them, uh -huh. and so they wanted an answer to their problem. And so, what were they told to go and find? Uh, find find the, the the yellow brick road, and it would lead them to the Wizard of Oz. Yes, sir. That's what it was all about. And it was interesting because once they got there, they were they met the Oz. Mm. You mean the, that little cat behind the curtain? Not the guy behind the curtain. They met the fiery guy, the guy who scared them. They oh, were scared. Yes. I mean, they were scared to death. They lived. They, they were in fear of this. They was in fear of upsetting this person. Mm. And as a result, you know, he sent them on all kinds of, you know, Easter egg hunts, all kinds of yes. you know, chasing stuff down, just, 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 just sending them out, mm. putting their life in danger. Mm. And it it it, can, it, it it's, it's almost uh, how people in their desire to get a solution to their problem, they will do anything. Mm. And in the Wizard of Oz, we know you know they were willing to do anything to get their problems fixed. And unfortunately, man, it, it, it's it's sort of like that as Jehovah's Witnesses. Anything the society said, if you, if you meet a good diehard Jehovah's Witness, he'll tell you anything the society say, I'll do. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. We would do anything that we were told to do. Mm -hmm. And for those who have left, we see the similarities of the Wizard of Oz as well. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, the man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. I remember, what a great parallel. Now, mm -hmm. we're being playful yeah. <laughs> about serious. Yeah. But you think about these parallels yeah. that JT just made yeah. about the Wizard of Oz, Toto, Scarecrow, yeah. the Lion, the Tin Man, and Dorothy, mm -hmm. and how witnesses are trying to follow the Yellow Brick Road. Yellow Brick Road. You know, when they ultimately met um, the Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. the little man behind the curtain. The man behind the curtain. I, I can't nail this perfectly, but I think his statement to the Tin Man, Tin Man was looking for a brain, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. The critical thinker. He wanted to think. He wanted to think. Wanted to think. And he basically said, my man, you've been the victim of disorganized thinking. Yeah, he did. The, the essence of that, <laughs> and I, I think about that parallel as, as it relates to Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. Heart is in the right place, but guilty of disorganized thinking. Yes, and that's so true. And interestingly for us as witnesses all those years, the disorganized thinking was by design. Mm. You weren't allowed to think logically and critically. Mm. Because it's, it's just turned down. It's mm. shunned. It's looked down upon. And that kept us going all those years. And wasn't it true that Dorothy, at the end of the movie, that the reality was 
that all that she was looking for was always right there. Right there. At home. Right there. Like the truth about God's word. Mm -hmm. It was, it's always right there at home. Right there. You didn't have to do all of that Yellow Brook Road. That's exactly right. Uh, fiasco. Hmm. Any other parallels as it relates to the Wizard of Oz <laughs> and the Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, I know for myself, when I really begin to see the, the man behind the curtain, everything changes. Mm. Uh, in the movie, they lost their fear of displeasing the odds. Mm. And that's one of the things that as a witness, you, you realize we was trying to please a book publishing company. Mm. We thought that somehow moving Watchtower books would make God smile at us. Mm. We, we believed that. We, mm. be, we connected our standing before God with what a group of individuals out of the United States. For people who overseas, they're, they're connected their relation with, with God with a group of people out of the United States, up in New York City. Um, so, I mean, once you see the odds for what he is, then you don't have that fear. Mm. And that's been the thing that people have often told us, you know, the living in the fear, they don't have it anymore. And JT, it seems to me that in this parallel, the little man that's behind the curtain, making all that noise, scaring folk, is really the governing body. That's exactly what it is. Uh, they, 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 they control the lives of witnesses in every single aspect. And once you begin to realize who they are and what they are, everything falls down. The shingles, the, 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 the blinders, they fall off. And we have talked, you and I both have talked to so many people over the years, and they tell you that's what it's like. It's like seeing behind the curtain. What is actually, like you said, what's, who's moving the levers and how they're controlling people's lives. Mm. So, I mean, it, 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 we, we often joke about it, but it is so true mm. that that analogy of the Wizard of Oz, when many of us look back at our lives being in part of this organization, that's exactly what we see. This is Daniel. <laughs> this is JT. Hey, and this is uh, another video coming from our hearts to yours, from our minds to yours, trying to help you avoid that yellow big road and come on home to Kansas. Take care. The, the Wizard, Wizard of, of Oz. Oz. Now, you know, ladies, see, that probably describes our life <laughs> as witnesses better than anything that I can think of. You know, that was one of my favorite movies back when I was growing up as a kid. Every year you look forward to watching The Wizard of Oz. But, you know, there's some very important um, lessons that we can actually learn from The Wizard of Oz. Um, one of the most important things that if you notice about The Wizard of Oz when the movie was on, is that when they went to the wizard, the wizard did something. You know what he did for them? Yeah, he promised to give them what they wanted. Yeah, exactly. So he found out, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And all four of them wanted something different. Right. The daughter, she said, I want to go home. You know, one person said, I want a heart, I want courage, mm -hmm. uh, I want a brain. So he promised them these things. And in exchange for promising to give these people these things, what do they have to do? Well, they had to go out on all these different missions yeah. and do all these different things he asked them to do. And, he, and they realized that if they didn't carry out these different missions that he sent them on, yeah. then they realized, hey, look, I'm not going to get the promise that he told me I exactly. could have. Exactly. Right. And so what the wizard did very effectively was he told them, I will give you these things if you go out and do these crazy things. In fact, mm -hmm. he sent them out to do things that put their very life at risk. And that's what the organization does to Jehovah's Witnesses. They will send us out on these assignments, as it were, that can put our lives at risk. And when you look at back when the society came out about transplants, people's lives were at risk. And people, in order to get whatever the society had promised them, people may have had the desire to see their grandmother who had died. They may have lost an eye or arm, or they may live in a country where they were poor. And so the society says, you know, you, you go on these assignments, as it were, and we'll get you a paradise, nice house at the beach, up in the mountains. You know right. what I mean? So, so all witnesses basically were given a promise of something. Whatever your desire is, you just tell us and we'll get it for you. But in the meantime, you got to do something for it. And us. you know what I find, too, about that, JT, what makes it interesting mm -hmm. and the reason why everyone is not on the same footing. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you say to yourself, oh, I'm looking at people that didn't take these transplants and mm -hmm. they died. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's somebody sitting in the Kingdom Hall and they didn't face that situation, mm -hmm. they don't have the empathy. Oh, no. But when we left the organization, we showed empathy for all of the situations. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like we didn't go through that, so we don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason why I also realized that when you're talking to people and when people are like emailing us and asking us questions about mm -hmm. how to help someone, just like in The Wizard of Oz, 
they all had something different mm -hmm. that they were promised. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why a lot of people's family members are not moved at the information that you're that they're hearing on the internet mm -hmm. because it's not their situation. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Right. Um, so so we look at how people when they begin to look behind the curtain, mm -hmm. they see what they have actually been putting their life at risk many times. Right. And the same with, with Dorothy and, and, and the Scarecrow and everybody. All of a sudden, their fear of the, of the, of the wizard just disappeared because, like, who was this guy telling us to do all this stuff? And then they realized mm -hmm. he was not what they thought he was. And that was one of the reasons why he kept telling them, you know, close the curtain, close the curtain, because he did not want to be revealed. And that's the way it is in the organization. That's why when you start asking questions, they don't want you to keep asking those questions because nope. eventually it's going to be revealed. And what often happens is, unfortunately, if you imagine uh, after he was revealed in the movie, can you imagine him trying to tell them to go out and do something now that will put their life? They'd be like, man, right. you must be crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. But you know, but you know and, and think about it like this, too, because when, when, when you all were doing that interview, and I could, all I could do was just go back in time for myself. And I, I came up with three things mm -hmm. that I noticed about the Jehovah's Witnesses and how they actually built us up oh, as yeah. individuals. Mm -hmm. And when and I'm talking about from a Bible study perspective. Okay. When I was out pioneering and I was on my Bible studies and the things that we were told to tell people when we were on these studies. Mm -hmm. Number one this was, I think, was in the uh, Live Forever book when we studied that one. And it was talking about, um, let. there's a paragraph in the Live Forever book that talked about if you tell your family mm -hmm. that you're studying with Jehovah's Witnesses, they are not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. So the next week that you would go in your Bible study, they would be all excited. You were right. You were right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My family, they think that you guys are crazy and this, that, and the other. And so they would tell you the story. And so now it was like a self-fulfilling promise, mm -hmm. a prophecy that what we said was true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then the second thing that we told people was, um, they were telling us in the um, Pioneer School that when you um, spend the last 15 minutes of your um, Bible study talking about the governing body, talking about you know the world headquarters, and, and building that confidence mm -hmm. in oh, those yeah. brothers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the third thing was make sure you invite them to go visit the world headquarters. Mm -hmm. Now, for people overseas, you know, in different areas that don't live in the United States, then you would go visit your branch in your country. Mm -hmm. But those were the three things I remembered mm -hmm. about how they were building up the confidence oh, yeah. of the Bible study to accept the governing body's teachings and so forth. Oh, yeah. You know? Basically, you want, this, them, you want them to view anything that society says as if God himself is Right. Saying. And so when you look at the Wizard of Oz and you see how that once you snatch the curtain away, your entire perspective of the organization, it just automatically changes. Mm -hmm. And it's at that point you realize, I can see why they didn't want us to look behind the curtain. Right. So it, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting movie and how it, 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 it illustrates so many things that take place in the lives of people who are witnesses. It's just, it's just the way it is. It is. Yeah. This is JT. And this is Lady C. Thanks for tuning in. And if you like this video, click the like button. And if you're not a regular subscriber, subscribe. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.